the computer. We'll give it a shot. All right. Uh, should be recording, so. Take yeah. It away. All right, um, I'm Tom's Cleary. Um, Chris already introduced me, so I'm the one librarians here and college archivist, and I'll be going over the citation tool Zotero. A, it's a open source um, tool you can download to your computer to help you manage and create citations and manage articles and websites that you um, are trying to use for your citations. As I'm going through this, uh, feel free to send a message in chat if you have any questions or just unmute yourself to say something. Um, questions help me out to make sure I'm talking about things the right way. So what I'll do is a uh, quick intro to Zotero and then show you how to add articles to it, uh, the tool, and then also how to create citations and change citations for it. Share my screen. All right. So this is the Zotero website. Um, let me, I'll put a link to it in the chat so you can get to it later. And Zotero, it's a tool created, it's an open source tool, meaning it's free, open to the public. Um, it'll always be free and they have an online account for managing citations too. It's designed for like, use in academics, um, because it handles citations. And it's a pretty simple, maybe you've used Ref RefWorks before and um, or EasyBib. It works a bit similar to that, but it lets you edit your citations more easily. And also, if you're trying to search for a specific article or like types of articles, it lets you handle that pretty well. Um, the website just gives you sort of quick overview on the tool. Um, basically, you can download citations with a click. Uh, you don't have to download articles independently. Organize it to meet your own needs. And it handles citations uh, really well. Uh, it also lets you sync cite uh, articles for, if you download them to a home computer, to like a work computer. Um, maybe you have two computers right now and you're trying to manage like which ones you're working on. Um, that's one way to do it too. It also backs up your citations to their own servers. So um, if your something happens to your computer, you can always make you always know that your citations are backed up on the cloud. That's also an optional thing. Also, if you're working in group projects, it's a really useful tool for sharing citations with other people or creating sort of like a resource guide if you're working on a project or to like share with other people. Um, and then at the very end, they have the download section <coughs> uh, to download the articles on your, uh, to download the tool on your own. Uh, Zotero works on both uh, Windows and Apple, uh, so you don't have to worry about doing it. Uh, but it only really works well on PC, on like laptops and computers. Uh, it doesn't really work for uh, tablets or phones, but they do have their own citation site, which we'll go over in a little bit for that too. Uh, just to create like citations on the fly. Um, first, what I'll do is I'll show you Zotero. So this is the Zotero I have set up on my computer. Uh, I'll qu quickly go over how what this software looks like. Um, when you download citations, and then I'll go over to actually downloading citations. Um, they give you, first off, this folder called My Library. This library is a list of all your citations that you have, um, just all pooled together. So if you scroll down, uh, it's just everything that's within these folders. You can also add folders to your library uh, just to help you keep different projects organized. Uh, maybe uh, I just had uh, finished my master's, so I was like, have a folder just for all the articles for that paper. Uh, for other courses I took, it's articles that I was collecting for those types of things for that specific class. Um, it's really useful where if you're in the research phase of a paper and you're not really sure what 
direction you're going to take the paper in and you're just trying to collect articles um, to look at later. It's a good way for just sort of getting maybe 20 articles into one spot and then like spend an hour getting articles and then like later on reading those articles um, on your own. This also lets you read articles without an internet connection because you're actually downloading the full article to your computer. Uh, if you click on some of these articles, they'll give you citation information over here. You can also edit that information if you need to. Uh, sometimes things aren't quite right or they're missing like the date and things. Um, but if you double click on these articles, opened up in a different screen, it'll bring you to the website. This one, uh, it did work. Um, so this, that citation I just clicked on, that was actually a site to a web page. So it's not just lets you download articles, but it also lets you sort of archive websites. So especially if you're like doing news articles, um, you know that articles might change over time. So you might be citing something in an article and you wanna make sure that whatever information in the article doesn't change later, you're saving a, down, a page a copy of that web page to your computer so you can always cite that specific page. So if the website goes down, maybe Harvard Business Review goes out of business in a year and they take down the whole site, you'll still have that website or that web page to uh, reference back to. Or if they change some information in this article, uh, you'll be still able to say, well, at the time when I downloaded this page, uh, or took a snapshot of this page, this is what the information said. So if you're presenting this information and someone says, well, I, the information on this site isn't right, um, this is what it says now, you can at least refer back to like, well, this is what it was when I said, um, this is what the citation, this is what the information was when I first cited that paper. Oh. Uh, they also, for the actual articles themselves, uh, if you click on them, they open up the full article in as a PDF. It downloads the PDF for it. Um, you can also reference things like oral histories, uh, books. They don't download the whole book. Uh, this is almost the whole book uh, of things, but you can either include whole books of things or just the citations of it. Uh, you'll see here, there's a little attachment thing and all these blue dots. Uh, basically a blue dot means that it's a citation with an item attached to it. So I'll go over adding citations to Zotero, um, doing some like research topic and adding things in from there. Um, like on this page right now it also it probably works the same way as RefWorks, um, but in this next step, we'll actually show you what Zotero can do much more easily. Now, so I'm going to use the library website for just search examples. Uh, Zotero works in a few different ways. I'm going to use Academic Search Complete. Again. Um, I'm going to do a search on. I'll do data mining because that's what's coming up. So when you install Zotero, uh, it da downloads this software that I was just showing you, but you also need to download a widget. And this widget, uh, it'll show up sort of, if you hover over it, it'll say save to Zotero. Um, and it'll lets you download the pages to the software there from your web browser. You can do this in a few different ways. Uh, one is if you click on an article, um, you can see that the icon here looks like a sheet of paper. If you click on that, it will save it to the folder you have selected on your uh, desktop application so you can always change which folder it goes into and it downloads uh, the paper and citation here 
So I just clicked on that, um, saved this article to the workshop folder in Zotero. And if you click on, if you look in the software, the citation is now here. Uh, it's, Zotero takes all the information from EBSCO. Uh, they have the title, they have the authors, uh, they put in the abstract, um, publication title, volume number, pages, uh, the URL to actually accessing the web version of it. And then over here, you'll see that they also added the attachment of the article. So here's the full article in that citation too. Maybe you've done it before downloading papers where you just did, here's download. We went to the PDF full text of the article. Download, well, wrong button. Download the whole article. And here they just title it document PDF. You save a couple of those also near like document one, document two, document three. Um, and just save them to your computer to open up later. Um, this causes a couple extra steps, but what also you're losing with this is uh, time mostly. So I've done it before, I'm sure you've done it where you just had all these files and you're like, oh, I need to reference, like what was that? Uh, where was the citation? Which page was it on? And not only do you have to now look for that citation, but you have to look for which document it is. So you might have to sort through like 10 different documents if you never renamed these files themselves. So Zotero, when it downloads the paper, um, it downloads the full citation information. So now you could be like, well, this is the person I referenced. Let me go to Zotero. Um, it's Karimi, this person uh, is process modeling. Uh, you just double click on it. It brings up the article right there. These uh, citation spots for the articles, they also let you take notes for it. So maybe you wanna add a note and you add in the quotes that you're trying to quote, um, or say like look at page I don't know, 45, uh, just to say for yourself there, remind yourself why this article was important. And to get out of it, is always a little bit complicated. I click on edit in a separate window, it lets you do it there. Um, otherwise, you can always just click on the item itself. It goes to this edit page, you can click on the title here, and it brings you back to the different notes. This is also useful if you are working with a group of people. Uh, everyone can look at their own notes or edit notes like, hey, look at this page or look at this paragraph. Uh, maybe we should include this in our research. You can also add or edit tags that they have for these articles, um, just for your own types of research. Uh, maybe add in the paper name or project that you're working on and like to just tag different projects. Um, these tags show up in the bottom left. And if you go to my library, you'll see that there's a full list of tags and you can always click on some of these tags and I'll bring up the related articles to that. Um, you can click multiple tags at once, or if you click no tags, it'll bring up all the items there. Um, sometimes, depending on how many items you have in your search, these tags work out well. I never organized them, so um, it's just giving you an idea of what's in these articles. You can also add related articles. So maybe uh, one author is responding to another author. You can associate those connections there too with the related, and that's just to help yourself out too for later on. So that's one way to add articles. So you're just looking at the articles individually. You click on the article, add it to the citation with citation link there. Um, in databases, they actually give you another option to uh, collect articles. And if you're on your search page, they have this safe to Zotero, but it's shaped as a folder now. 
these icons change for different websites, different types of pages that they're on. Um, so if you click on this, it'll actually give you a list of all the search results on your page here. And then you can just, based off the name, select a few different articles that you want to add to your citation to Zotero. I uh, clicked on the folder before, this window popped up. Click OK. And now it'll download all the articles I've checked off. Um, this is really useful if you know you have only like 20 minutes and you're like, okay, I have to do something. Um, I need to collect some citations and I want to look at them later. Um, you can do that by just checking off the names, downloading a couple, and then you can always open those up on your phone uh, later on. I'll show you how to do that. Um, sync because they got synced to the web and to their own uh, backup servers. This is, yeah, it's useful if you know you're gonna be like going on a plane somewhere, you're going to a conference, um, you're gonna be riding the subway, spots where you know you won't have service for a little while. So you wanna sort of collect a bunch of documents ahead of time to read later. Um, that lets you do that. Because once you download these files off of the databases, they're gonna stay on your computer. Um, let's see, the citations. Looks like I got something in chat. Where'd it go? Okay. Um, yeah, so where did the articles go? So we had a, a, clicked off the application of data mining, clicked off, I think, rugby game, and clicked off data mining as examples. And you'll see here, data mining got added to it. Uh, rugby game performance, there's that's the article there. Uh, and then they also had the application of data mining over here. So all those articles that get added in, I have it listed as sorted by creator. So uh, lists by the person's last name, you can also just list alphabetically, or by the date these articles are published also. Um, and with these articles, they did down download some of the articles to it. Uh, the Danny day mining one did not. This rugby game performance one, they download the article from that page. Um, So that's a good sign. Sometimes it doesn't download these articles right away for various different reasons. For this one, it could be it has a, let me get back to the web page. Uh, if it uses HTML full text, they won't download the full article because that's not a PDF. And one of the other ones uh, is also HTML full text. And those are types of articles won't get downloaded. What you can do to add those in is that if you go to the item and go to HTML full text, you can uh, print out the articles as if you would a paper and add that paper in to it. Um, it does get a little bit more complicated for that, sorry. But if you click on print, you usually can print out articles just as is with the citation information there. And then um, from the downloads folder, add that item into your paper. So you could print out the article, print options over here. Um, I don't have Adobe PDF in here. Uh, some of you guys might, so let's say print to uh, PDF. But uh, yeah, you can always add these articles into later if you print them out as PDFs. If you have a PDF there all ready to use, bring this over. You can always drop existing articles into Zotero. So maybe you have, I need to just rearrange these windows real quick. Maybe you have an article already in your downloads thing, you download to your computer, 
you see that the paper you're trying to cite does not have um, an article associated with it, you can always click on the document, drag it over to your citation, and it adds that citation in there. It adds the PDF to your article and the uh, data for it. And it also changes the name of the article to uh, the title of the article. So it's no longer like document.pdf, it's the more a citation type thing for that. If you have citations, um, you already have a list of citations ready to go, uh, and you're just trying to do something that manages it better, or you want to move over to Zotero off of RefWorks, they do have different ways of doing it. Uh, you can also add items in manually by clicking this plus sign, and they give you options if you want to add a citation for a book, um, a document, interview, and then they have a list of other options too. They also have a citation wizard uh, with like little wand. And that's if you are trying, especially useful if you're trying to cite books, so you can cite the ISBN number of a book. And what Zotero will do is look up that ISBN and bring you the citation. I have a book in front of me now. So I'm going to type in citation, uh, the ISBN. So that should work. It'll look up the book and then it'll not just add the citation into it. the book was Desert, Desert Solitaire. Um, but here you'll see it identifies as a book. Here's the title, the author of the book, um, information about the publisher. Uh, the, this is actually all the right information, the date the article is published in, and uh, just all that type of information too. So if you have like a shelf of books, you don't have to manually enter in everybody's names, all the book titles. It'll just type in the ISBN and it'll automatically do that. The same goes for academic articles. You'll see in a lot of these pages in the databases, let me get back to one of these things. Um, they have these things called DOI numbers. And you can cop, if you're not getting the article or the citation the right way, you can always look for this DOI number and copy and paste that into the wizard and um, it'll create the citation for you there. Do that one. They couldn't find that record. Um, doesn't always work perfectly, uh, depending on different formats that happen. So that's one way to organize the citations. You can also, this also works for new sites and websites. Oh, sorry. So maybe you're trying to cite an article from the New York Times. Um, you can't cite necessarily things from their homepage right away, but once you get to the articles, you see that lets you cite as a web page, uh, or as a news article specifically. So they identify that you're, this is a news article, not a, a regular website article. And when you click on it, they'll save it to the folder you have selected, put the citation in there. And here's the article. They have the article title, the authors of it. Uh, they actually have an abstract for it. New York Times, date, all that wonderful information. And um, for the news articles, they don't always give you a snapshot for it because they don't identify as a website, but they do have the URL here to get back to the article. If you're citing a website, you could do actually a library website. Um, this will, if you click on it here, it'll do a citation, uh, it'll create an item for it, and also create a snapshot. And that's where it'll let you go back to the item as it was for it. So in the library, if you clicked on the library in Zotero, it brings you back to um, a snapshot page. Things get a little bit broken, like some of the links here, but that's stuff that usually doesn't impact the content of the item, um, but it more impacts just like 
the way it looks. So uh, things won't always look perfect, but the information there will be the same. Uh, so after you've, after you've collected a bunch of citations, um, you're probably trying to add them into a paper. And Zotero makes that extremely easy to do. I get a new document set up. So when you install Zotero, they also install a widget into either Microsoft Word. This also works with uh, Google Docs. Uh, Google Docs has a Zotero option. And this lets you set up their document to create citations and just also add and remove citations and update citations as it's happening. So if you're writing a paper um, and you're trying to add a citation, uh, you go to at the end wherever you need the citation, click on add a citation, and this window will pop up to set your document preferences. Uh, this is where you choose your citation style. They have all the major styles. Um, in the manage style section, uh, they'll bring up another page here. They have an option to get additional styles. So if you, and that covers like all different types of journals that, are, that people publish in and all their like own unique uh, citation styles that they use. So I'm going to add a citation. Uh, we'll go with APA. It's using a seventh edition. Um, that all looks good. I you click OK. And everything is showing up off screen right now. Uh, when it adds a citation, it'll pop up this red bar here. This lets you add in your citations. Um, and I just want to double check one of those things. Be real in shock. And you can either search your citations by the title of the article, and I'll bring up things that match it. You can also search by author, and it'll bring up the articles there. You click on the article, and that will start off your citation. Um, if you need to cite page numbers, you can always click on this again and it'll edit things like page numbers. Um, this is a website, so it doesn't have any. Uh, I'm just using it as an example. Um, and I'll let you add page, and page number into your citation. You can also add additional people to this. Uh, so maybe you're citing two things in the same thing, uh, and I'll just line up the different citations there. And all in alphabetical order, and according to the format that you did. So this one's APA. So when you have your citations for the sentence ready, you click enter and it'll add in your in-text citations there. Um, I'm trying to open up the chat again. Um, Yeah, so let's just sit right out citations for different sentences. Um, at the end of writing your paper, you can always create, at, once you're done writing paper, you generate your works cited page. And you can do that through add or edit a bibliography. And when you click on that, it'll just pop in your citations in the style that you need um, at the end of the page where you selected it. You can always move this to a, a separate page on its own. Um, but anything you cited in your paper will show up here. And it takes all of the authors, the titles, any links that you might need to get back to the resource, um, anything that you need, like professors are looking forward to, just the information there. Um, all in the right format, mostly the right format. Uh, as this article is an APA and it didn't change the uh, capitalizations of that. Um, usually it does. I don't know what's happening right there. I might have, might have not updated Zotero in a bit. So um, it's doing that. 
you might find out if you're like writing an article or a paper um, that the place you're submitting it to actually requires a different type of citation style. This was in APA. Uh, maybe you find out that they're actually looking for MLA. You can always change these citations here. If you go into uh, the, that Zotero tab, I click on document preferences, and then just change citation style. So you could go click off the MLA 8th edition, just click OK, and it changes uh, the citations there for you. Uh, just automatically switches all the names, all the people into the right spots and to the right formats. Uh, here it just add all the quotations back in uh, and the full names of the authors. You can do this like as many times as you need to. Switch between like down to Chicago and it automatically does whatever you need done for the citation styles. You can also, after you've done that, add in additional um, citations. So if you add in another citation, somebody. Uh, it adds it to the end of the sentence and then automatically adds it to your bibliography at the end. So you know that as long as you are doing this, uh, typing it in, your bibliography is going to be automatically updated with the articles you added in. If you get rid of an article, it won't get rid of it in your bibliography right away. So at the end of writing every article, it's a good idea to use this refresh button and that will update uh, the bibliography with anything you removed from the citations. Uh, you also might find out that something in Zotero didn't really go the quite the right way. Uh, maybe you realize that someone's name was misspelled or is missing. Um, where's one? Uh, this article here, uh, say the HIV AIDS, the NIH article, uh, they don't list a creator for it because it was a website and to go to the page, they don't actually have a creator for it because it's a corporate uh, organization that wrote that article. So if you did a citation HIV Uh, you see that, oh, this citation is coming out wrong. Um, I need to go fix something in Zotero. You can always go back to Zotero, add in the that information. Um, I'm just going to do a quick short one for it. Cut this out. And last name. Uh, they do. Yeah, uh, we'll make this date 2019. Just change it. Um, website title. Switch that. And um, once you're done with making these changes, they get updated automatically. And if you go back to your paper and refresh your set, the document there, it will update the citations within that paper too. Here you'll see that it added in the date for the page. Uh, it changed the title to HIV AIDS instead of that whole full thing there too. Um, so it's really useful if you're editing citations and need to switch around like someone's name. Um, or fix some spellings of things and um, citations like that. All these citations that you're making, they're also backed up onto Zotero services if you choose to do that. Uh, find that page. I have logged into uh, my Zotero on the website here. If you go to 
Zotero.org, there's the login button there. It'll ask you to log in. Uh, they let you store, I think, 300 megabytes of files on their servers for free. Um, that's easily like 100 large PDFs of information. Um, I've stored like close to 500 articles uh, for a different project without any problem. Um, so you can save a lot of articles for free. They also have options to upgrade your storage and it's like 20 bucks for a year, uh, if that much for like two gigs of information. So if you know you're gonna be saving a lot of things and you wanna keep them safe, um, they do handle that information pretty well. Uh, they're also a nonprofit organization, so they are they try their best to keep everything great, um, safe and uh, secure. So they're not sharing your information with other people. So all this, yeah. Um, we do have a question about: Are you able to um, create like an entry for an email you receive, especially one with a an attachment? Um, we'll find out. So. Uh, I'll go to add an item, go specifically. So yeah, they have an email option here. They'll just uh, make this list specific to the email. Um, so for the author, you'd say who it came from and just the subject, the, the title of that email address. Uh, to save the attachment, you would first need to save it to your computer and then you can just drop, drag and drop it into that item here. Uh, they are or trying to keep organized. And then is there any way to share your entries with other people? Let's say the person then wanted to later share their, their document with another and through another email with someone. Yeah. Um, so there, they do have some export functions. Um, one is just export item. Uh, if you go to the item, you right click on it, click on export item. They give you some options to download it. And usually there's this Zotero RDF thing. If you click on export files, uh, export notes if you had added your own notes to it too. If you click OK, it'll ask you to save the file. This is my desktop. Um, it's titled exported items and what it does it'll create a zip file uh, Give me a second to get organized and drag things over. So this is the zip file it created uh, the folder created and Wait That one didn't work out That one didn't have an item in it, so that was actually the wrong example to do. Let's do this again. Sorry about that. So it'll give you a folder, it's, it'll be called exported items, and if you go into it, they have the files section there, and you can just get to the file there. Um, it does look, they make a, in the file section a folder for each item. So if you're trying to do a group of items, it might be a little bit more complicated to do. Um, but you can always add this into an attachment to send to someone else uh, as another attachment for an email. Uh, if you're just trying to share it's, it's also these file, this folder you can upload to OneDrive or Google Drive and just have a list of the, the files that you're keeping up there too. They do have a collaborate section on their website. I haven't used it before, but they have this groups uh, sort of platform. And if you go into the groups one, you can always create a group, create a new group. And there you'll have, you can set up a page that will post your citations there for you. Um, 
you can set up different like monitoring if you want it to be completely public um, with closed membership where you decide who gets invited or not or private ones and you just have to send the links to people. Uh, you need to type in a URL and then when you create the group, it just gives you the platform to do that there. If that helps out too. It might be a bit easier to go through the groups than to send the individual files, but it'll mean more work to create the group on your side for that. Sorry, I have that Zoom thing popping up anytime I switch tabs. So it's making a bit complicated. On their website part of the files, they do have tools to duplicate the items, um, and they also would have the ones to add those items to the specific groups that you're trying to create also. Uh, they also might make a folder, and ready to share your whole folder with that group too. Um, and, uh Another quick question, because you mentioned it works with Microsoft Office and Google Documents. Does it work with Microsoft 365? Um, let me try that. I don't know. I haven't tried that yet. Let's try this out. Greens, Robs, and Keith. I was at a um, presidential search. No, it doesn't look like that they work for uh, the 365, the online app version of it. They don't do that. Um, probably because it has more complicated program than Docs, Google Docs. Um, and the Microsoft products tend to be a bit more uh, locked down for adding new apps to it. So you need to make sure you have Microsoft Word downloaded on your computer if you want to use Word. Uh, otherwise, you can always use Google Docs and that works out automatically. The Zotero, they also have a way to create a quick bibliography. Maybe you're just trying to make a list of citations to send to people, or if you're a student, you just want to create something to upload later or share around. Um, they have this thing called Zotero Bib. And that's just a quick way to make a citation for it, for articles. Um, you can type in URL, ISBN, uh, or the identifying information. So to go back to the NIH website, if you go to Zotero Bib, you can always paste in the website, try to cite that article, and it list the website here as a citation. Uh, they don't always, it's not always the greatest at adding authors to it or doing the right title. So you can always edit these citations in their own title section here um, and add in other information. And you click on done, it creates a bibliography at the bottom of the page uh, and also here. And at the end, you can always either create a link to this version to copy if you click on it, you can always share a page like this with other people you email it to or send it to yourself to look at later. Or you can copy the URL and visit that page uh, separately. <clears throat> you can also export it as a file uh, to import into RefWorks or Zotero also. 
Uh, and this, you can add in as many citations as you need to for things. Uh, it's a quicker way to do it and um, can be just as helpful too, especially if you're doing books too. You can always type in the ISBN again. And then I'll create a citation for books for that. Thomas, my name is Joanne. Can I ask a question? Hi. Yeah, definitely. Okay, is the, will the students be using this come the summer or come the fall? Or are, are they already using it? Uh, some do. It's like an optional software program to use. Um, for, I've had a number of students come to me to ask to use it because they plan on using it uh, like after LaGuardia, they like they're interested in topic and they're just trying to keep themselves organized. They use it as an organizational tool. Um, for Zotero Bib, some that I've worked with liked it more than say RefWorks or EasyBib. Um, but they're it's just we're showing another option of tools that people can use. Uh, we, it's not like mandatory to use for other people. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. Are you going to set up workshops in, in the fall or in the spring or whatever we physically get back to school for the students? Yeah, yeah, we've been running this workshop um, for a while now and it's had, okay. I've had okay. a mix of faculty, staff, and students always show up. Okay, all right. It's my first because I'm just I'm new. So oh, great. I'll see if I can give this to the students. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, because we don't. While we showcase Zotero because it's like a free program to use, um, mm -hmm. they're always welcome to reach out to me to use this specifically, or if they have just questions about citations in general, um, to any of the librarians. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I appreciate the information. Yeah. I will also put a link to our um, list of workshops on our website. Okay, we Chris. Okay, Christopher. Okay. And the other thing I want to add is if there's other workshops that you are interested in, you could send that to us. And, uh, you know, if it's something that falls into our discipline, we'd be more than happy to entertain that also. Thank you. Thank you both. Got it. Yeah, so that's kind of it for um, showing what Zotero does. Um, it's, it's like for most classes it'll come in useful if they're doing their capstone course uh for LaGuardia and then they're trying to actually manage number of citations for like something you just need one or two citations for I mean it's more work than uh you need but uh Zotero Bib would help out those types of citations uh those types of courses and that students just looking for one or two citations okay Thomas I was just gonna uh, ask about if there was any word about the mobile app or if there's a companion app. Still. They they don't have an app still. Um, what you can do is say if you're start off your day sort of at a computer and you download, you like spend say 20 minutes to collect your references in one place. You can always mm. open up the web version on your phone or a tablet. And there you can access the articles themselves. Um, okay. I got it. I got it. <laughs> this one has your article attached. Yeah, so I'm in the web browser now. If you go to your web browser on your phone, uh, click on the article you're trying to read, it'll open up the PDF there and you can read it there. Um, so you don't have to go back to looking up that article at home. Uh, you can just open it, like you already collected all the articles there in Zotero. You open up the web version of Zotero on your phone, and then you can start reading in there. Thank you, man. Yeah. Uh, I've used that part a lot for uh, riding the train. Or just get a bunch of them together and then like skim through a few of these. Um, yes, yeah, so if you have questions, you can reach out to me, um, ask them now, or you can always send me an email later if you're trying to set it up uh, on your computer, if you run into any problems, or if you know of students that are interested in this too. Um, 
I've walked a few people through setting it up on their computer and also any helping them troubleshoot any problems that they've had with this apparel. So it doesn't work well on, on a laptop, on, a, on an iPad? Uh, not on an iPad, no. Okay. So I have to be on my laptop on my desk. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay. You can end up, if you, yeah, to collect articles, you, it's best if you use a computer or a laptop. Okay. Um, but to read the articles, you can use just about any device. Okay. Uh, you just have to log into Zotero.org. Thank you. They also have uh, in the forums section, um, if you are like running into r random problems and you want to interact with the forums, they do have like troubleshooting guides for everything where people are just saying like, hey, this thing isn't working um, and they try to fix it there. Uh, okay. This also just shows you, this is like, if you're really can't figure it out um, or just trying to troubleshoot stuff on your own. But it shows you that they're always constantly updating the software. So if there is a problem you're running into, um, it's very likely like in a week or two, they'll fix it rather than like you have to wait uh, a couple of months or a year. Um, actually, the, for who had the question about sharing documents, the group section here, they have a video where it, it describes how to create a group showing how to add content to the groups and um, collaboration through that also. Yeah, um, I think that covers it all. So thank you all for uh, coming. If anyone has any more questions about Zotero, feel free to you know ask them now. Or I did put a link to our, our listing of ways to contact library faculty in the chat. Um, you can also find that on the library's homepage a full list of our workshops. I also put a link in the chat, but you can find that in the library's homepage as well. So we, we have one coming up next week on Thursday. Um, I think it's at 1030 in the morning on fake news. And we are doing a series of additional um, kind of office hours through our library chat for citation in the next two weeks because we know students are going to have lots of questions and need help with citation. Some of our Library faculty have, have volunteered to do hours, you know, late in the evening and early in the morning outside of the library's normal hours. So please share that information with students or if you are a student with friends and know that, you know, we're always available to ask questions through email. Um, and many of our, our library faculty are willing to set up one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom sessions or collaborate or find other ways to, to be as, as helpful as possible during this time. So does anyone have any um, last minute questions from Thomas about Zotero? If not, you can always ask me them later. Okay, okay hearing none and it is two o'clock, we're gonna go ahead and stop the recording so we will try to provide this recording later if you filled in the um sign-in sheet you provide us our our, our uh your email